Uh, as we begin kind of a, a new Sunday, but also a new chapter in our church, I felt almost compelled to speak on the passage that we're going to be looking at today, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 12. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to be returning to our series, The King and His Kingdom, in the book of Matthew next week again. But for today, we're going to just pause for a second and go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read a good chunk of this chapter, starting at verse 4. The sermon today is not necessarily going to be a full explanation about all of these spiritual gifts that are listed here and how those all work. Rather, the focus is mostly going to be about how we as a body, how we as a church actually function together, or at least how we ought to function together. After I read the text, um, we're going to pray, but then we're actually going to watch a video that I believe is going to be a little bit helpful, and it's going to be a little bit longer than a video that we normally show. It's actually part of a series on identity called Branded by Apologetics Canada. Some of the young adults have already seen this video. If you would like to watch the video or other parts of it in the series afterwards, you can find it on Right Now Media if you've got subscription to that. If you don't, you can talk to the office about how you might get that access. Um, I also want to let you know that after the sermon, we're going to spend a little bit of time in corporate prayer together. A few minutes of doing that before we then move into celebrating the Lord's Supper together. So if you are able to stand at this time in honor of God's word, I invite you to do that. So we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 4. This is the word of God. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. 
And at this point, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would bless the reading of your word and that you would work in and through your people this morning so that Jesus Christ would receive honor and glory and dominion in this church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's sermon was titled, Run Together, and now having watched the video about dog sledding, it might make a little bit more sense why I decided to call it Run Together. Uh, The video, again, longer than we normally would show in in a service, but it's a great parallel to what we're talking about today in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Being a church that runs together or functions together, one body, many parts. And this is really the big idea. We're jumping right into it. If you look around this, this, this building, you look around, you see that God has brought us together. By his grace, through the gospel, we now are this church family of all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of upbringings, but we're here together. And so since God has brought us together, we must learn to function as one. That's our big idea. God has brought us together, so now we've got to learn how we function as one. You may not have chosen the people who are in this room. God did. Our choice is, are we going to learn to function as one? And I think this sounds good, and I think most of us would say, yeah, 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 yeah. Amen, of course, we we need to do that. Unity, let's go for it. But how do we actually do this? Because the reality is, we're selfish. And we get annoyed and irritated with one another, even if it's not on purpose, We hold our own preferences and push our own agendas and we like what we like and we don't like what other people like. And if we're honest, some of us just kind of like to stir the pot and create some trouble. And we want what we want and we want it yesterday. So how do we do this? How do we function as one? How do we actually go towards a common goal? Well, first of all, we cannot do this on our own. From the beginning, we need to understand we need the Lord's help in this. We need the Lord's help in this. If he isn't our primary focus, we are going to crash. We are going to make all kinds of mistakes. It's going to lead to chaos and confusion and disaster because guess what? Individually, without the Lord, each one of us is a disaster. And so we're just a disaster smoothie waiting to explode because we didn't put the lid on top and we hit start and oh, now we've made a mess. This is why we need the Lord. He has to be our primary focus. And if our goal is not honoring him and glorifying him, then that's, that's where we gotta start. So ask yourself even this morning, is that actually my goal? Is that actually my focus and my priority? Not one of my priorities. Is it my priority to honor and glorify God first? Or is it to honor and glorify me? Because if it's to honor and glorify me, the team thing's not going to work. And if your answer is anything like mine, you might say, sometimes I think it's to honor and glorify God, and sometimes I think it's to honor and glorify me. That's why we need God to help us. We need him to shape us and to change our hearts. And we, can, and we say, pray, Lord, help me so that I can get aligned with you and where you're going and what you're up to. That's where we've got to start. As far as practically working through some of the things in this passage, we're going to look at four things quickly that all of us need to do individually in order that we can function well corporately, okay, so that we can run together. The first one is that we need to know our role. We need to know our role. And maybe there's some pro wrestling fans in the room right now. You're thinking about Dwayne Johnson or The Rock. He famously would say this in the 90s. You need to know your role and shut your mouth when The Rock's talking to you. That's what he would say. Now, again, his use of the phrase was all about get out of my face, sit down, get out of here. You don't know who you're talking to. Just you're lower on the totem pole. Get out of here. Don't you know your role? Sorry, Dwayne. That attitude's not going to work in the church. It's not how it goes in the church. This is not about you need to know your role. This is about each one of us discovering what gifts and abilities that we have and how to best use them for the benefit of the church and the glory of God. If you go back to verse 4 of chapter 12, it says, There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. 
There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And if you go then down to verse 7, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit. Why? For the common good. Not for you, not for me, for the common good. Look now at verse 14. We're going to jump around a little bit in chapter 12. Verse 14, for the body does not consist of one member, but many. And verse 18, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. So we have to understand there's all kinds of roles, all kinds of parts. To borrow from the video, you're not going to like this. What kind of dog are you? Ah, uh, I should not have said that, maybe. It's a positive thing coming from the video. Those are all good dogs. Okay, good teams, good companies, good organizations, good and healthy churches, they have different people functioning in different roles all over the place, okay? And, and, and you need to understand that these roles, they're, they're not better, they're not worse, they're just different, and they have different functions. There were four different dogs mentioned in that video, all dogs, all, all pulling the sled, but different roles to help pull the sled, working towards the common goal. And so for us, we got to think of our, our body, our church, there's all kinds of different people here. And we need to learn what role we have, what role we, we've been made into so that we can operate well collectively. What body part are you? To use Paul's analogy. Now, some of you might know what part you are. And you may have known for a while and you're serving well and you're doing a great job and you're thriving. Great, praise God, keep going. Some of you are maybe not quite sure or like you think you know or you've been told maybe by different people over the time, I think you're an elbow. You're an elbow guy. And you're going, okay, yeah, I'm doing elbow things and I'm, I'm okay at doing elbow things. But you've never really spent the time to go, am I really an elbow? And, and, and the truth is you're actually a nose. And you don't know that because you haven't spent the time to go to, to really discover that. And this whole time, you're like, I'm okay at an elbow. But then you get put into the nose rule and you're like, oh. And now you can thrive and then collectively the church can thrive because now we can smell things. And that's helpful. We need to smell things. Okay? That, that, that kind of idea. Again, it's going to take time to discover that. It might not happen right away. So you've got to have a little bit of a willingness and a little bit of persistence to kind of figure this out. Because what if you don't discover it today and the Lord says, you're a nose. He doesn't say that to you this morning. You're like, well, where, where am I? What do I do? Um, so be willing to investigate. Be willing to understand this it might be a process. And a quick word on that. Try stuff. I don't know what I am. I've never tried anything. You're probably still not going to know what you are. Try stuff. See, sometimes in this pursuit, um, we try something, and, and then it doesn't quite work out, and then we give up and don't try anything else. Please don't do that. Let's say you try, uh, hey, I'm going to serve as an usher, or I'm going to serve in the nursery, and you know what? It doesn't go well, and everybody knows. You know, it's like, nope, this is not my role, okay? That's not failure. And you're not a failure. That's clarity. Please stop thinking that because something didn't work out, well, that, I'm a failure, that's a failure. No, that's, that's direction. Hey, you're not an elbow, right? So not there, somewhere else. It might take a while to find that somewhere else, but keep trying until you find that something that does jive so that the rest of us together can thrive. Don't give up. And I will say this, though, another thing. Sometimes that, that like, perfect fit isn't available all the time, and sometimes there's just a need, and you just kind of have to fill that need. Like on a hockey team, and you have a goalie, and then the goalie's sick and doesn't make the game, and the team's like, uh, someone's got to be goalie. And they're like, no one else is a goalie. Well, put on the pads, just try. We know you're not normally a goalie, but we need you just to do it because we need a goalie. And the rest of the team, we're going to work really hard on defense so that this bad goalie doesn't have to carry the team. Because, and they do it, right? Sometimes that happens, okay? So please don't think that, well, I haven't found my perfect fit, so I just won't do anything. 
Or that's not area of my gifting, so I'm not going to lift a finger. That's not my calling. I'm only a nose guy after all. Listen, our calling is to know, love, and trust the Lord and serve him. That's your calling. How that works out, okay. Healthy teams, healthy churches, we support each other when needs arise. That maybe shift the team a little bit. Wink, wink. Yeah. Okay. Also, knowing our role actually helps us run well towards the goal. What's the goal again? Bringing glory to God. That's the ultimate goal. Stemming off from that, the Great Commission to be and make disciples. There you go. All nations. That goal hasn't changed, by the way. It's not going to change. It's kind of why we put it on the wall. Because we wanted to anchor things in. Say, what are we actually supposed to be about? And anytime we start drifting, we're like, oh, wait, there we go. Glory of God is supposed to be first, which is why it's the biggest in the letters. It's intentional. So we need to know our role. Secondly, we need to do our role. Do our role. Not just know it, but do it. Look at verse 26 and 27. Now, if one member suffers, all suffer together. <clears throat> if one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. The parts functioning together is so crucial for the overall health of the body. If we don't do our role, if we don't use our gifts and our talents and our abilities, if we refuse to serve, the church is hindered. We're not going to be able to run as well. Every single believer in Jesus is needed for the health and the strength of the church. Back to that dog sled video. I mean, if you had one dog missing, if there were seven dogs, they could still run. They're still pretty fast, pretty strong. But it wouldn't quite be the same, right? Seven, okay, well, we, we can do it. But if you have eight dogs and one of them just says, nah, I'm not running. You guys can just pull me. Deal with it. The other dogs will probably do it, but they're going to get tired, dragging that eighth dog along, saying, come on, are you ever going to do anything? Because we're doing stuff. Are you going to join? No? Okay. And they might stumble. They might get tangled up. Like, it's just not good. So we need to understand. I think we know this, but we need to hear it. I need to hear it too. Guys, the church is not for spectators. The church is for contributors. It's, it's not okay to just be a consumer. I just consume, 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 and spectate at church and do nothing. That's not okay. That's not biblical. It's one reason why we emphasize becoming partners at a church. Are you here? Are you committed here? Is this really your church? Are you on the team, or are we just pulling you along? No one wants or needs leeches that just hang on the body, do nothing but suck the life out of it. Don't be a leech. Don't do it. Now, of course, we know that no one should or can or could do, do everything, right? No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. And if everyone does serve in some way, the load is lighter the load is more manageable. It's more sustainable for everybody working together. 1 Peter 4, verse 10 and 11 are helpful here. As each has received a gift, what should we do? Use it <laughs> to serve yourself. That's not in there. To serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks is one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies. Why do we do this? Why, why, why? In order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It's in the Bible. Why we're supposed to do things. It's right there. I'm not just making it up. You can look. So get really practical for a second. I'm going to talk about some ways that you can serve in the church. We've been talking as a staff about maybe some ministries that could use some help. 
I think sometimes we might think that everything is fine because stuff just kind of happens. Well, sometimes stuff um, kind of happens, but it would be happening maybe more effectively and efficiently if, if we had some more support. There's a number of people. We have a lot of people in our church, by the way, who serve. This is not like none of you do anything. No, no. We have a lot of people who do serve, but we also have a lot of people who serve in multiple roles because they believe that it's important to do it, but I'm sure they would love a little bit of a break. So we actually have some sign-up sheets in the gathering place and at guest services after the service today. Huge thank you, by the way, for everybody who has been serving, some of you in multiple roles for a very long time. Uh, please, if you're one of those people that have been doing multiple things for a long time, I'm not talking to you, and I don't want you to put your name on four more sheets today. <laughs> that would be not okay. But I'm just going to list a couple of things really quickly. Some current needs. Hey, every year we try to do this thing called Surge Camp, our largest outreach um, through uh, kids and families in the area. And you know what? We need about 45 different people to make that camp happen. 45, in different roles. 45. We'd love to do camp again this year. Absolutely, we'd love to do it. But we need people to do it. Right? It doesn't just happen. Um, kids gathering. Two to three more adult workers would be great. Adult workers. Uh, youth, another adult leader would be awesome. Guest services, three more people would be great. Uh, sound and tech, a couple more people to help with sound and tech stuff would be amazing. Facilities work, maintenance, inside the building, outside the building, general cleaning, outside stuff. Man, we need people for that, of course. Hospitality. When we say hospitality, we were generally talking about like actually like setting up things here in the building on Sunday, setting up coffee, staying late to clean up coffee, snacks, that kind of thing. Uh, eight more people. We could use that. Security, we need two more people to keep us safe while we're in here. Security, so yeah, strong people, please. That's why I'm not out there. <laughs> All right, uh, so you can sign up to learn about these opportunities. Signing up does not automatically mean you start serving there next Sunday. It's signing up, I'm interested, someone will contact you, we'll have conversations, there's probably gonna be some training involved in some of these things. But it's a, this idea to say, hey, we need to know our role, we need to do our role, how can we help our church? Thirdly, though, we need to support the other roles. So we need to know our role, we need to do our role, and support the other roles. Back to... Uh, verse 14, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. That doesn't make sense. We've said it before, but it's worth repeating. You and I can't, shouldn't do it all. Everyone has limitations. And I think we need to stop this idea of putting unrealistic expectations and standards on ourselves and on other people. Each receives a gift. Each has a role. Each has a part. Nobody has all of them. Nobody does. If the whole body is an eye, Paul's like, how ridiculous would that be? Just a giant eyeball going down the street that can't even protect itself because it's just an eye. I can see, but I can't even talk. <laughs> Not helpful, right? We need everybody. So instead of competing with each other and comparing to each other and being jealous of one another and their roles, we need to support and celebrate and cheer on the diversity of the body that we have. Unity and diversity together, effective ministry Unity and diversity together. And I think sometimes we struggle with this because, again, maybe we don't know our role yet. Okay, sure, fine. But sometimes I think we struggle with it because we don't like our role. We want a more prominent role. Or we're not happy that someone else is in that role. We think we could do that role better. We don't like the cards that we've been dealt and if we're honest to the core, scary, scary thought, 
we actually are questioning God's choices in his composition of his body. Instead of complaining about the cards that we have been dealt, why don't we say, thank you, Lord, that I'm allowed to play the game? You did not have to save me. I don't deserve to be brought into your family, but by your grace, you sent your son to die for me and bring me into this family. So I'll play wherever you want with whatever you give me to do. Because again, verse 18, verse 18, look at this. As it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. God is perfect. God is all wise. As Warren Wearsby has said, are we to believe that the sovereign Lord made a mistake when he bestowed the gifts? Not a mistake. God gives each congregation what they need when they need it. Look around. You're what we need right now. Help might be coming later, but not yet. (laughs) This is what we got. Each of us needs to trust God and his wisdom and to thank him for his grace and check our attitudes. It's on my whiteboard for a reason, for me. Check my attitude and embrace this, like, I'm just here to do whatever you need, coach. Put me in wherever, right? That kind of attitude. We need this kind of attitude and approach all the time, but especially at a time like this, when more confusion, more needs, maybe a little bit more prominent. And a quick word about that, I've said this to a few of you in passing, but generally two types of people emerge when there's a crisis or a transition. Two types. I'm going to call them the flexible and the frustrating. The flexible people, they show up. They're willing and eager to help. Give me a shovel, man. What do you need? What would be meaningful for you? How, how can I help? I'll even, I'm a nose guy, but I'll even go back to being an elbow for a bit. You know, whatever. Whatever you need. Flexible. Then there's the frustrating. And selfishly, they serve only how and when they want or they just don't serve at all. And often, they're the loudest critics. And they use a crisis moment to push forward their agenda. Now's my chance to get what I want. Things seem to be unstable. Here's my chance. I've been waiting for this. Now I can pounce. This happens. Don't be the frustrating ones. Just don't. Don't stir up unnecessary junk. Don't fight dumb fights. Make small things into big things. Not not just for me, but, but for us. And ultimately, for the Lord. Remember 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11? In order that in everything, God would be glorified. God's probably not going to be glorified if you're like, (laughs) excellent, now's my chance. No. Probably not going to be glorified if that's your attitude. So finally, fourthly, as emphasized in the video, we need to listen to our leader. We need to listen to our leader. The musher, crucial for a dog sled team. They guide, they encourage, they give instructions when to turn, where to slow down, speed up, stop, and forces them to take breaks. Did you catch that part in the video? Forces them to take breaks. They want to run. They just want to go. Breaks are essential for the health and longevity and the safety of the team. Sometimes the best and right thing to do is to stop running for a second and just chill out. Put everything on the evaluation table for a season. We're not going to just lather, rinse, repeat and be on autopilot. Just stop for a second and think about what's going on. Listen to the leader. Because without the leader, the dogs, they run to exhaustion. They run like crazy. And they'll run the wrong ways. And you might think, oh yeah, the pastors and the leaders, those are the leaders. Pastors, elders. Well, in one sense, yes. But in another sense, no, not at all. They're just part of the dog team running. We have one leader, one musher, one king that we need to listen to. And his name is Jesus. 
Ephesians chapter 4, 15 to 16. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, just in case you weren't clear, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Jesus is the leader. Jesus is the head of the church. He's the one who guides us along and through scary and weird and the easy and the difficult and the confusing. And it was emphasized in that video, the leader doesn't let go. No matter what, Jesus doesn't let his people go. He's not going to abandon them. He's not going to forsake them. Ephesians 5 tells us that Jesus is working in and through his church so that he might present the church to himself beautiful and splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. That's what he's doing, and he's not going to stop until that happens. Jesus loves the church. Our leader loves the church more than any of us ever can or ever will, and he is committed to the church. He gave himself up for the church. He died for the church. And because we need our leader, this is why, as Jordan shared earlier, why the elders say, hey, let's do this day of prayer, April 12th. It's a Friday. That's inconvenient. Yep. Sure is. But we're doing it. It's going to be here in this building again. We're, and we're, we're going to have a few minutes of prayer in, in this service in a second. But April 12th is meant to be this time. We want to call everybody. That doesn't mean everybody's here at the same time. doesn't mean uh, don't go to school, don't go to work. But the reason we did 8 a.m. to midnight is that, hey, we could probably catch everybody in theory. At some part in that day, you could probably get here. Someone will be here to have this building open again. There's going to be an opportunity. You can be by yourself. You can come with your family, come with some friends. Five minutes, five hours, whatever. And if you really can't because you're out of town, would you spend some time praying for our church on April 12th anyways? The point of this is not to say, look at us, we did a day of prayer. The point is to recognize how much we need our leader. We need Jesus, we need his guidance today and every day, individually and corporately. So please join us April 12th, anytime, 8 a.m. to midnight. So as we wrap up, I think we all understand we're entering into this season, right? It's reality time now. Unknowns, difficulties. I don't know what's around the next corner, but our leader does. He knows what's around every corner. And the cool thing is I don't really need to know what's around the next corner because I know where all the corners end. I know the final destination. I know that he's going to take us there. So it's okay. It's okay. He's not going to let go of us, by the way, around those corners. He's never going to let go. And we're going to remember him. We're going to worship him as we have a time to celebrate the Lord's Supper. He gave himself up for us. We're going to do that in a second, but right now, I want us to enter into a time of prayer together. A few minutes. A few minutes. This is what we're going to do. We've done this a couple times before, and if you're here like, what's happening? Don't worry, I'll explain. You can pray on your own, just where you're seated. Seated? That's not a word. Seated? You can pray on your own, or you can circle up with a couple people close, close by, and you can pray together. We're going to have a couple prayer suggestions come up on the screen to help guide you. If you don't want to follow those, that's fine. You can pray for whatever else you want to pray for. Um, if you want to spend time praying and preparing yourself to take communion, you can do that. Because when the prayer time's done, I'm going to come up and we're going to move into that time of taking and celebrating communion. The point, again, I'm going to come up in a few minutes. The point of this is just to humble ourselves individually and corporately and say, we need our leader. If our body is going to function as one, if we're actually going to learn how to do this, we've got to stop and we've got to pray and say, Lord, we need your help. We really need your help. So I'm going to pray for us 
and then we'll start our time for a few minutes, and I'll come back up and close it. But as we do this time, just remember that our leader loves us, and our leader's never going to let go of us, no matter what. Father God, we thank you that we have hope and comfort and truth that we can hold on to that you love us. And so for this season, especially, we say in a fresh way that we need you. Help us to seek you. Help us to want you. Tune our hearts towards you. Work in us. Help us so that we can be a body that functions well and brings you honor and glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.